you're going to live with that regret that you never pursued this dream of being a physician that you should be pursuing right now. The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 287. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, and I'm here to answer your questions, the questions asked over at premedforms.com in the non-traditional pre-med discussion. Before we jump into that, I wanna talk about the MCAT Minute sponsored by Blueprint MCAT. It is now September. Can't believe 2021 is flying by. A lot of students right now don't realize, if you're in the middle of an application cycle, don't realize that you can't take the MCAT at the end of the year. And so a lot of students are scrambling to to fit in the MCAT this month, or they're looking at January dates, and they're wondering, when can I take it? Is January too late? And historically, we have said for MD schools, January is too late. For DO schools, there are a lot of DO schools that accept January uh, MCAT scores. And what you have to do is look at each individual school to see what the latest MCAT score that they accept is. And determine whether or not you want to try to squeeze in a January MCAT date in this current cycle that you are applying or put off putting in more money for secondaries and and submitting to more schools and just delay your MCAT and reapply at a later time. A lot of that decision making comes from how well you did with your first MCAT score, how well you did on your first real MCAT and the prep that went into that and trying to figure out through self-reflection, how well can I seriously improve my score if I turn around and take it either September or in January. So lots of decisions that you need to make and lots of individual decisions based on each individual school on what MCAT score they will accept, the, the date of that score that they will accept. So lots of things to think about. If you're looking for some more help with your MCAT prep, go to Blueprint mcat.com today. Sign up for a free account. You get a half-length diagnostic. You get their first full length for free. You get access to their amazing study plan and over 1,600 flashcards on their amazing new spaced repetition platform. Go check it out again, blueprintmcat.com. All right, so our student today is asking a question about not having a college degree, but wanting to be a physician. They say, surgery and now orthosurgery, I've decided that I want to be a physician. I want to be like the men and women that I have assisted and worked with over the years, but here's my dilemma. So it sounds like just a a pause here. They say surgery and now orthosurgery. It sounds like they are some sort of like scrub tech or or surge tech or, or something. They're involved somehow in the operating room with these surgeons. I am soon to be a 33-year-old guy with absolutely zero college coursework. I tried college right after high school thinking I wanted to work with computers, but was completely uninterested in the coursework and ended up dropping out of all my classes. So to make a long story short, I am 33 years old, starting over wanting to get a bachelor so I can apply to medical school, which would put me, if all goes well, at 37 or 38. Do medical schools take guys like me serious because I'm a little discouraged hearing from other writers when they talk about the undergrad degree they already have and now they study for the MCAT, I can't help but sit here and think to myself, man, if I only thought about this 10 years ago. But in all seriousness, should I pursue other things? I would be graduating medical school at 41 or 42 years old. I can't help but feel like I'm a day late and a dollar short. Any advice or opinions would be much appreciated. Also, I'd like to add that I'm a single guy with no kids or any real financial burden, mortgage, or anything. I could write a lot more on what led me to wanting to be a physician over the years, but I don't want to make things too long. I love this question because there are so many of you out there right now doubting, am I too old? Is it too late? Will medical schools have some sort of bias or prejudice against me because I'm older, because I never did undergrad during the quote unquote normal traditional time frame. are they gonna even take me serious? And the answer is yes. Yes, it is your time to shine. If this is what you want, you're only 33 years old. 
I'm 41 as I'm recording this. You're gonna be 41 when you graduate medical school. I feel like I'm 18, right? In my head, I still feel like I'm 18. Like I could just, I could go another round of undergrad, another round of med school. Like I'm ready to keep going. If this is what you want, then pursue it with no hesitation. The moment you hesitate, and this is where I get into plan B, and I hate the, the, the plan B mentality, is the moment you hesitate is the moment that you allow self-doubt to creep back in and decide that something else is going to be easier, faster, cheaper, and when you're 70 or 80, you're going to live with that regret that you never pursued this dream of being a physician that you should be pursuing right now. Now, so as you're sitting there wondering, can I do it? The answer is, I don't know. Can you? You've never been to college before, right? Or you started but then dropped out relatively quickly. Can you do it? I don't know. Most people can, but some people just aren't smart enough. I mean, that's just, that's just the brutally honest truth. Can you do it? I bet you can. If you want to be a physician, you will figure out a way. Will medical schools be biased against you? Will have prejudice against you because of your non-traditional journey? Yes, some of them may. The far majority won't. The far majority will look at your journey and want to talk to you about it because they'd be interested in hearing about how you went from high school to no college to working in a health-related field to now wanting to be a physician, what that journey was like, why you're doing it, and so much more. They will be interested in that. They will look at you as a pillar of the class that they are trying to build, someone who's coming in with potentially a little bit more maturity, some years under your belt to help anchor the class that is going to be filled with younger students. You can be the quote unquote dad of the group, right? That will be you. Medical schools love non-traditional students. Not every medical school, the far majority, love non-traditional students because of everything else that you are bringing to the class. And I'm not talking about skills. I was having this conversation yesterday. So many people try to, especially non-traditional, and yesterday I was talking to a military vet, so many people try to come in to sell skills, to say, I am going to be a great asset to your class because of all these skills that I have working as a scrub tech or search tech or whatever it is that you do in in the operating room or, or, or in healthcare. They don't care about your skills. They care about what you are bringing, the intangibles to the class, the experiences that you've had that will lead to you being a great classmate. And having the experiences that you've had, having the time under your belt will lead to those things. They'll lead to you being interesting during your interviews. They'll lead to you being able to write about interesting things during your essays or in your essays. All of those things will help you, quote unquote, stand out, even though I don't like talking about that kind of standout kind of thing. Without selling yourself, just being who you are, the age that you're at, the experiences that you've had will lead to you being more interesting, different than everyone else. So if this is truly what you want, then the answer is go for it. You have to give yourself permission to go for it. My guess is that there's a lot of fear of failure in these words that you are scared to put it out to the world that you want to be a doctor, that you want to go to undergrad, that you want to go to medical school, and you're afraid of what happens when you tell the world and you start undergrad and you still don't like it, or you start undergrad and you aren't good at biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, what, what have you, or you get to medical school and you realize that it was a mistake. And that's where doing your research, getting some shadowing, doing the things that you need to do to prove to yourself that this is what you want. So take some time, separate yourself away from the career that you have now, get some shadowing and put yourself in different environments to see if this is truly what you want. 
and answer that question. Is this what I want? Then yes, then I'm going for it. And if I fail, at least I won't have regrets when I'm 80. And that's all I can leave you with. I hope this was helpful for you. Many of you out there wondering if this is something that you can do. If you have questions you want answered here on the old pre-meds podcast, go to premedforms.com. Ask your question in the non-traditional pre-med discussion, and we'll answer it here on the podcast, hopefully. Don't forget to check out blueprintmcat.com for all of your MCAT prep needs. Have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the old pre-meds podcast.